Hi there, how you doing? It's Andrew Biss. Um, congratulations to all of you who um, joined the contest and uh, it was fun doing it and judging it. It's very hard to judge between the four, the top four, but uh, yeah, there has to be a winner and a second place uh, in any competition. Uh, it was great participating also in the Fukushima's here uh, actions across the world and I participated here in in one in Melbourne, so that was great. I met some some nice people. It was a fun event. One in California, I think, topped it all. There was one in Paris, of course, and uh, many other cities. I, I'm not really sure. Now, while that is a great event, uh, it's very inspiring. It gets people together, and people can network and exchange ideas. It does have its own its limitations. I think Christina Consolo uh, put a a tweet mentioning our Melbourne uh, Fukushima is here action because we uh, I made a video of it so she mentioned that which is great I you know, thanked her and she said uh, I said thank you for mentioning us and she replied back to me that uh, we need to do another one of these very soon and I yeah I completely agree now in terms of getting the word out um, we have a lot of uh, cyberspace internet uh, assets like we we have information we we know what the information that we're, we're, we're getting out there is true like uh, with our documentaries and fukushimafacts.com fukushima diary uh, about plume gate with uh, patrick henry uh, all, all the other sites all the bloggers uh, alexander higgins etc etc it's 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 really it's really great what everyone's doing it's it, um, it's great online content um, inspiring, uh, informative, uh, and with Kevin Blanche, uh, every, everyone. So, uh, um, but uh, I think you know, this is just my, just my opinion. Uh, let me know how you feel. The um, the Fukushima Truth Movement, if I could call it that loosely, we're in danger of perhaps um, living and dying in cyberspace. Now, I mentioned it in my my, my latest documentary. You know, just briefly at the end. That um, the the internet, um, uh, Facebook and Twitter, they're all those things. They're they're great for spreading the word, but of course, as as you well know, they were designed as um, also as tools of control over uh, people's people's minds. And we use it for in in information spreading and you know uh, truth war, information war. We use those tools to spread the the message. Uh, and uh, we've generated some great cyberspace online assets, uh, websites, and, and, and online content. But um, uh, the Fukushima here uh, is here is great in that it, it, it's a physical presence, but also it's uh, it didn't um, engage you know, ordinary people enough. Like for example, I, we were on St Kilda Beach in in Melbourne, and uh, we had our signs up. Fukushima is here, which is great. And in solidarity with us, Fukushima is here across the world, and we're these very young, you know, teenage, twenty-something uh, sunbathers were looking at us. Uh, some were ignoring us, which is which is fine, uh, but quite a few were looking at us, and they were, they were. I knew they were. I could look look at them. I can read minds a little bit, and they're some a bit bemused, but also they're quite. I know they're curious about what we're. Um, what we're doing there, spilling out Fukushima, is here, and we uh, we had a megaphone, and I didn't speak because it wasn't really my deal. Um, it was organised by a couple, um, three other people, some of them, some of whom spoke on the megaphone, and uh, we were sort of speaking to ourselves, you know, saying why we were there and why it's important. But we didn't address the crowd, and they they were, I think, they were generally expecting you know us to address them or explain what we're about. Some a couple of Dutch guys in board shorts came over. <laughs> And I said, oh, we are curious about what you are doing. Uh, and it was great, you know, like uh, we talked to them and, you know, they were curious. And, you know, Australians came up to <laughs> talk to us, <laughs> but they were curious about um, what we were doing. And uh, I really, well, I had the camera, but I really wanted to actually address them and say, this is why we're here. This is why, you know, 400 tons a day, the equivalent of, I don't know, thousands of Nagasaki's being put into the Earth's biosphere um, a day, really. And uh, they, this, I knew that they wanted to know about that because they know 
you know, Generation Y, whatever, they, you know, they, they know something is going on. Maybe they're not curious enough to, you know, I'm speaking generally to, to seek it out, but um, everyone knows Fukushima has been, you know, we don't hear about it anymore. When you say Fukushima, it's like, oh yeah, what is, uh, it's just it disappeared from the news. People will say that instantly. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to check it out, but um, they often say, remark, uh, that, you know, it's, this is, I haven't heard about it for years. And um, uh, I recently sponsored, you may have heard of, uh, well, that, well, that contest I mentioned at the beginning, I sponsored a, um, a awareness contest. You know, we just, you know, very little money, but um, uh, I got so, I got four really good entries of people who are willing to do some Fukushima Fukushima awareness in their local area, the local town square, whatever, uh, with banners and these what I called radiation hotspots. Now, these hotspots can be elaborate information centers, or they can be uh, they have some multimedia. Uh, I mean, you look at these um, these hotspots. Uh, Kevin Blanche is once in a hotspot. He's a hotspot in himself. But um, yeah, he was an entry, so that was great. Uh, well done, Kevin. But if you look at uh, also Kenny Egap and uh, Nuts Farat and uh, uh, Legion Network CH, if you look at the um, the uh, the ingenuity and the the, the passion, the the uh, the work, the work they did to put up those that local, that 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 tangible content uh, where people can get information and find keywords and links and flyers that will lead them to the information. So that's what you want to do. You want to lead people into it, not not sort of run it, run it birds saying oh, I've got bread and just scare them away. But you know you want to lead them into information where they they be, they they own the information. Not because you're you're bombarding it with to them, but um, it's it's there for them and to to sort of peruse and ask at their leisure. So, um, if I could equate it to, you know, in this in this struggle in this this war on, I mean, we are really the we are the um, warriors on in this war on terror. This is the real war on terror, the war on radiation, the war on military industrial complex. Um, Borgs, you could say, trying to install um, <laughs> new reactors, uh, um, um, you know, silencing the uh, the news on Fukushima, uh, waging war in Syria, example, uh, for example, uh, for example, and uh, um, Fallujah, all that kind of stuff. Oh, where where the warriors, where the peace warriors, in in this war on terror. This is you know, this is what the war on terror is. It's not fighting Al-Qaeda, which you know, is run by the US government. Um, so if we're fighting a war, a war by, by peaceful means, we, the enemy is radiation. I don't hate the radiation because it's just, it's man-made. It's, it's made by the military industrial complex a, as a way to, you know, kill off life, people around the world. So, but uh, look at the enemy. The enemy is radiation, and it's also the military-industrial complex. Now they're ensconced in governments, and the only thing that can oppose the government, this this force, is, as Eisenhower said, a knowledgeable and alert citizenry. Now what do we have? We have a Miley Cyrus-focused you know, citizenry, sports, football, soccer, all that kind of thing, rent-seeking, all that kind of thing. So. The enemy is the um, military industrial, industrial complex and their radiation. Now, look how, if you look at um, a radiation map uh, crossing the northern hemisphere, look how pervasive the radiation is. It's, it's in the air, it's in the water, it's, uh, it's there to stay. It's going to endure um, and keep coming out of Fukushima, you know, at uh, unfettered if we don't take over our governments through peaceful means. Uh, very ag aggressive means, but, um, you know, with a lot of awareness, a lot of um, uh, uh, forceful action. Now, it's, the only op option is to be, is, um, I, I guess, uh, 
in awareness is is uh, it, the the warfare the peaceful warfare is asymmetrical <laughs> in that uh, we don't know what what can we do but but we need to we need to take action we can't wait on another Fukushima is here event you know say November December and we congregate on the beach and you know um, feel good and it's it's all very good for meeting people but we need to be in the local areas I mean we need to be as pervasive and thoroughly spread and uh, uh, ubiquitous as the radiation itself that's our enemy that's our that's who we're fighting against and if we're not engaging ordinary people uh, it, where they are where they congregate um, then we don't really have a chance because the radiation will it will um, will out, out, outdo us and the people on those people on St Kilda Beach, they they wanted to know about what we were about, and we didn't really, uh, you know, uh, anything, give them anything, uh, speak, address them. They, I think they were some of them, quite a few of them were expecting to hear about what we were about, and we were just there for the um, the show of you know of solidarity with the Fukushima's here action, which is great in itself, but there was such an opportunity missed there, and there were only about what seventeen of us. 17, 20, it became 25, but that's just a few, a small number of people. And, um, yeah, everyone was looking at us, you know, we, they wanted, they wanted to know more. I mean, they, they, you know, you're on the beach, you're in front of us, uh, what's your story? And uh, we didn't engage them. And uh, so that's, that's, that's perhaps a weakness in, in what we're doing. So we need to be in the physical spaces where just like the radiation is. Uh, that's who we're competing against. And by, by by extension, of course, we're up against the military industrial complex that is uh, ensconced in governments and, uh, you know, large corporations. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Napoleon said, um, you know, Napoleon is not a flawless character by any means, but he said the greatest attribute of any soldier is not courage, it's endurance. How much can you endure? Um, how much work can you put in, uh, in flyers, in, in, in setting up your, being leaders in your local area? I mean, without leaders, without staff, or, or in the beginning, without many assets or friends. But I made this contest for really peanuts uh, and uh, for for uh, credible entries entered the competition they didn't know me I, I'm just a guy in Melbourne um, at the bottom of the world really and um, they put in amazing uh, content for people to see amazing uh, application and work uh, in getting those protests, uh, protest awareness actions going. Uh, they don't know me, they, they don't know if I'm really serious, if I'm gonna really remunerate them like I told them to, I would, but uh, it was just a way to stimulate uh, a bit of co healthy competition, make it fun, encourage a bit inv of investment in um, getting brochures and, 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 um, and information about Fukushima in people's area, local areas. Because uh, yeah, that that's where that's where the, I believe the battle will be fought and won um, in people's minds and people's you know where people live. Uh, people want to be distracted. They want to be. They want to to, to see something. Uh, if you're willing to present yourself, and I'm speaking to myself as well, um, and if you're if you're presenting a banner or a awareness site, uh, you are the leader and, and they really, some may look with bemused, bemused um, uh, expressions and some may, may look at you skeptically, but uh, they're really quite envious of you because you're there and they're not and they know, they want it, they're just testing you to see if you're, you really believe in the information that you're imparting. Do you really believe in this? Do you really believe that uh, this message is worth um, spreading to the world? Do you really believe that? So, because um, the alternative 
is, um, you know, when I talked about endurance and Napoleon believed that, uh, you know, endurance was the greatest attribute of a soldier. If we can endure and believe in ourselves and endure to spread the word where um, it's not immediately welcome, you know, um, you know, and it's lonely, you know, a protest site, you're there with perhaps by yourself with two or three other people, three or four people is all you need. Uh, in a, in a local spot to, to do this. But yeah, my my message is don't wait on orders. <laughs> don't wait on orders from me. I'm no, I'm no man on horseback, you know. Don't wait on orders from Kevin Blanche, Christina Consolo, from anybody. You know, this, the radiation is, takes it all, takes its, uh, the radiation is, um, is spreading and uh, there, that is the enemy. And if we are not out there in the physical spaces and and waiting for a, a, a really large congregation event like Fukushima is here, uh, November, January, whatever, uh, we won't win this war because people won't know. And, uh, we, you know, these big con congregation events, spelling it out on the beach, they're great in... in, a, in crucial ways but they're also they don't they don't um, go where people are living and working and, and suffering people can't you know they're not on the beach not everyone's on at the beach and um, uh, so they're great in one aspect but they're deficient in in other crucial areas I believe so you know look at the um, the work that people do have done it, where people are at um, that's where we need to recruit people. If I, if I could make it a, a um, talk about a, a business or sales analogy, I mean, you know, you have like insurance salesmen. You know, they have, they have territories and they, they believe that everybody needs insurance. Everybody needs their product. You know, this is you know, great insurance, great. Um, but, you know, if you, are, if you are warriors and if you are, if you are business people, you must believe in the product that you are selling. And the product is information about um, radiation that is killing people around the world. And the ways to uh, mitigate that uh, radiation as outlined with uh, Christina Consolo's site, you know, radiation mitigation and, you know, like um, with iodine and, you know, I have to learn more about it. So do you believe that your message is worth... Um, stumping on your street corner chalking putting up banners is it do you really believe in that because if you don't then you know if we don't if i don't believe in it then this uh, this this game is over i believe that we have a message a product that sells itself the survival of the biosphere and uh Progeny, our children. Uh, what else is there, really? Um, so, I'd like you to perhaps just for a moment focus on the thing, the one thing, well, one or two things that are really, really important to you right now. Really, um, really something you love or something that that's really you know that you really focused on. It could be um, your next house payment. It could be. Or that car you're going to drive, or that uh, boy or girl you're going to to date if you're if you're in that you know young and dating age, or uh, it could be um, your children, you know your son or daughters not doing well at school, or they're in trouble, or maybe they're doing really well at school, and that that's awesome. You really focus on that, you know, you're really happy about them doing really well, and uh, it could be uh, your focus could be. Um, on uh, having a great career and uh, or um, I'm just making lots of money which is you know which is great you know as long as it's ethical oh all those kind of things and, all, and how with all those great things you know all the things that people are focused on or, or joining a sports team playing golf whatever how do those things fit in the context of 400 tons of plutonium-laden seawater going into the ocean every day, the Pacific Ocean. 
how do those things f fit in thousands of Nagasaki bombs going off almost every day from Fukushima, the, equi the radioactive equivalent of that, every day. How does that fit in with the Northern Hemisphere being radiated um, continually? And it'll come down here as well. And and I don't mean that I don't mean to belittle those wonderful things that you are focusing on, but all those things you are focusing on that are your focus right now, they they really stand for naught unless we fix this problem. So by by fixing this problem as best we can, uh, informing other people, everything else falls into place, or everything else is is. Is attainable like if we're focused on our child who's doing really badly at school or and we need to focus on that of course or, or doing really well at school that's important that's really really important but that child will, is, is going to grow up in any case in in what kind of world um, we may want to date this beautiful girl or date this guy if you're a girl and that's that's great you know uh make lots of money but how what good will that be if the if at the if those dreams those things we focus on are attained in a world that is uninha uninhabitable um for us and future generations so uh there is a lot at stake in here in, in this in this uh, war. In, in my contest I had a first and second prize and uh, it was really heartbreaking to to give to choose between first and second, third and fourth. I mean third and fourth didn't get any prize but I thank all of you people who entered it because uh, inspiring work, really awesome stuff which I hope will actually replicate because you're all you are all supposed to be leaders in this war. And I can't tell you what you're supposed to do, but you're supposed to, we're supposed to inform people where they're at. And I can't tell you the means to do that, but here are the protest challenge was to spark ideas as to how to do that. And other people who have uh, spun off on the protest challenge and, and done their own thing, you know, not connected to the protest challenge at all, have done uh, great things as well. And so, so how much can you endure? How much can you do uh, to um, to contribute? Because we're we're all leaders. I mean, not enough uh, not enough leadership positions. Uh, there, there's lots of leadership positions in this in this war. Yeah. So getting back to the first and second place. Yeah, it was really hard to choose first and second place. Uh, 20 grams of gold, one 10 grams of gold. It was really difficult. It's heartbreaking to choose first and second because uh, Nuts for Art and Legion Network, they, they did so much work, so much imagination. Uh, Kenny and Kevin Blanche put so much passion and uh, Kenny gathered up a lot of people and uh, very powerful um, protests, awareness, entries. But... So I had a first and second place. In this war on radiation, the war on the military-industrial complex, there is no second prize. There's only first prize. You know, if we, we put in a good effort, you know, we do Fukushima's here, we do a documentary, you know, uh, it's still online, you know, it's, there's diminishing returns with putting stuff on cyberspace. I mean, cyberspace is very powerful, but if it's not backed up by a physical presence in our truth movement, then it'll die. In, it'll die in cyberspace, and I'm, I include my my online work in that as well. So there is no second prize. So we should you know reflect on that. There is no second prize where there's only first prize. There's only victory that we can strive for. We don't have a choice but to have victory because the. Um, the alternative, I spoke of endurance before. So we can endure like Napoleon's soldiers and have victory, or we can endure radiation until it eventually kills everyone. And, um, you know, our children will be included in, you know, they'll have to endure um, that radiation as best they can until, you know, their DNA gives out and 
and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of unspeakable. So um, yeah, my message again, don't wait for orders from headquarters. There is no headquarters. You are the leaders. Uh, you need to be, we need to be, I need to be in spaces where people can see us. They have, they can have links, material to find out more information. I don't know where this movement's headed, but we need to be out there. So, um, yeah, please tell me what you think. Uh, have a look at um, some of these um, clips of what people have done. Uh, we need to call our elected, elected representatives. Uh, we need to um, just inform people as much as we can. Because a, a mass awakening, a mass um, uh, wave of people knowing about what is going on is, is what will force uh, the change that we need to see. And the alternatives are just too unspeakable to imagine. Um, I mean, I look at my um, my sons every night, and I look at them in the. Uh, I mean, that's my focus, I guess. But um, yeah, I look at them in the uh, the context. When I see them, I see them in the context of Fukushima, because uh, uh, they, um, you know, what we hope for them uh, hinges on yeah, oh, you know, how much income you make and the choices you make as parents and as a family. But uh, it also hinges on, hugely, on how we can turn this thing around uh, on that beach in Japan. And the, uh, the terrible um, disasters that had happened at Hanford and the new nuclear reactors being proposed in England, or reactors around the world. We have reactors in Australia too, um, experimental ones, I believe. So when you look at those things you love or you cherish, see them in that context of um, what's spewing out of uh, Japan right now. Um, and that should be motivation enough to, for us to, to, do, to go those steps further than we have done already. Um, yeah, just going in the polling, I think, I believe he said that um, it's funny, something like it's funny that how men will ju jump into gunfire f for little pieces of ribbon, you know, the the um, the medals that uh, Napoleon would give his soldiers. Uh, and um, it's interesting, like, what people will do for um, consumer items and um, a bit of... Um, a bit of fame on, on, you know, what reality TV show. So, I, I, we, we um, have to be motivated for things more than trinkets. He also said that soldiers, uh, the greatest thing that motivates humans is fear and self-interest. And that may or may not be true, but if you look at it, look at, um, uh, I mean, Fukushima action, Fukushima truth, is self-interest personified. Fear and self-interest, um, it's a common, it's a, it's our, our self-interest in common humanity in, in the things that we we fight for, you know, the fa our families, uh, you know, uh, better health, um, social justice, whatever. Uh, all of them be, uh, are not irrelevant, they're very relevant in the context of this struggle for Fukushima truth. So that's just me um, talking about where we need to go, for, for me, I don't know, um, yeah, again, tell me what you think, I have to terminate this video because it's going to take too long to upload. Um, okay, take take care, I uh, hope you are all well, um, don't wait for orders, myself included, to do our best to spread the word on Fukushima truth. Okay, Andrew Miss out, take care, bye.